Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Fast Noise 3D node. So we're going to jump into Fusion. We've got a little setup here and I'm going to bring in a Fast Noise for 3D node. So I'm going to type in Fast Noise. But instead of the FN, which is the normal Fast Noise that we've gone over, I'm going to bring in Fast Noise Texture, which has a little 3FN behind it. So I'm going to bring in the Fast Noise Texture node. And I'm going to go ahead and input that into our uh, Arial. So on our Fast Noise Texture node, we have two output modes. We have 2D and 3D. So first I'm going to go over 3D. And what the 3D output mode does is it calculates noise texture based on 3D coordinates or the UVW. So nodes like shape 3Ds and everything automatically have their material set up. So this is going to set up its noise texture based on the UVW of our 3D shape. So we can come in here and change our detail and change the brightness. We can change our contrast just like our, we can on our regular fast noise node. And additionally, we can change the scale up. And for our scale Z, even though we do have a W or the Z, the Z distance within our little shape, you're not going to notice anything with this model. So some models, if we change our scale Z and it has specific scaling on our Z axis or our W axis, we'll be able to change that with this dial, but this doesn't. And our discontinuous checkbox right here just changes the smoothness of those gradients. So by default, it's going from zero to one and it's trying to make it as smooth as possible. And if I hit discontinuous, it is not going to do that. So you're going to get a different look with this checkbox. Additionally, we can do inverted. So we invert our fast noise. And then down here, we've got material ID so we can change our material ID. Now, the 2D output mode allows you to do the same thing with 2D textures. And one difference between 3D and 2D is we can't animate say like our seethe like we can on our regular fast noise because you notice there is no seethe here we can animate our scale and we can animate our brightness contrast detail in our scale z if we had it but we can't animate that seethe to make it look like it's moving to be able to do this we have to be in the 2d output mode so now you notice we now have seethe and seethe rate and they're both animatable. And with both textures, mind you, just watch your seams because you're going to have seams. So if I rotate this, you notice we have a seam right there. And you're seeing it twice because yes, this is see-through. This is uh, opaque. So it's applying alphas to uh, make it see-through. So let's go ahead and uh, reset all that. Now, what we can also do with this fast noise is we can bring in a media and input it into our fast noise to use fast noise texture on that media. So I can bring in, say, a video and input it into our fast noise texture. And now we've got uh, this look. And if I didn't have that fast noise, it would look like this. So this is our little media that we've got coming in and let me uh, trim it up. But if I input it into our fast noise, this back into our texture, you can see we can apply that fast noise to that texture. So now it kind of looks like that. But we can make this a little better. So let's go ahead and uh, play with our fast noise here and get a look that we kind of like. And let's go back in 
let's animate our uh, seethe. So we'll go there at the end. We'll give it a, I don't know, five. Let's see if that's too fast. No, that is good. So there we go. We've used our fast noise to animate a texture onto our sphere. But we can also input this into other nodes or other material nodes. So if I was to bring in a Torrance node and we can input that into our material and bring this into our diffuse color. Now we can use the specular that's on our cook torrents to be able to affect this noise texture that we input. So we can go to our specular. And additionally, we can change color if we want. But we can go to our specular and we can turn that do fres fresnel off. And uh, we can change our roughness up so it's a little shinier and we can uh, alter our intensity. So there we go. And as a reminder, this is see-through. So it's got some transparencies and so some opaqueness to it. So let's go ahead and make this a little better. So we can bring in a spherical map. And let's bring in a reflect. And let's grab an HDRI. We're going to input that. And if you remember right, we went over the fall off node the other day and we're going to bring in a fall off node and put that in right here. And we're going to input this into our sites. So let's go in our fall off node and uh, let's change some of this fall off here to get the look we want. Bring that way up. Let's bring knees way down. There we go. We got a little better look. And of course, let's uh, add a little animation to this. So it's not so stagnant. So there we go. And we can also add some animation to our sphere itself. Let's go ahead and do it on the Z so we're not seeing that uh, seam. Go to the end. Let's just do uh, 90. So there we go. We've got some movement in our little sphere. And the cool thing about using this fast noise, like I said, it's see through. So we could technically take another sphere and put it in. Let's change the uh, size of our little sphere there. Let's take our media and actually let's copy this. Let's input it into our material. And let's bring our media in. Let's go to our cook material and uh, let's change up the color a little bit. And let's uh, go ahead and add some animation on this shape. rid of that one. And there we go. We've got a little sphere inside a sphere. We can create a nice, cool little material. So that is the fast noise texture 3D node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.